The last type of data that we want to consider is panel or longitudinal data. Uh, now, if you look at a panel data set, this has a structure that's very similar to a pool cross section. Okay, you might have you, it might appear to you that there is data on units on cross sections over time. But the key difference between a panel data um, and a, a pool cross section is that in a panel data, we are following the same cross sectional units, example, people or individuals, houses, schools, uh, countries over time. Okay, so it's the same set of individuals or same set of cross-sectional units that are followed over time. Okay, so let's take an example. Um, so there are a couple thousand elementary schools in Michigan, and we can collect information on the test pass rates, spending, um, and other types of socioeconomic variables uh, annually over the last 10 years, right? So if we follow the same schools over time for 10 years, then we have created what, what we call as a panel or a longitudinal data set. Okay, so since panel data, um, constructing panel data require replication of the same units over time, these are typically more difficult to obtain than just a pool cross section. Okay, uh, both remember both pool cross section and panel data will increase your sample size, but panel data can be um, comes with some challenges because a lot of times the same people or the same units that you're trying to follow over time, um, they may not enter the survey and there might be some attrition, okay? But there are some advantages, even though uh, there is attrition, following the same units over time has the advantage when we are trying to infer causality. Now, let's take a look at a panel data set Okay, and this um, data set is coming from, um, this is a, if you do help wage pan, you might have all of this information up here in R. Uh, this is basically coming from a paper, whose wages do unions raise? A dynamic model of unionism and wage rate determination for young men. Okay, and this was published in the Journal of Applied Econometrics, this is a good journal to follow uh, because um, they also have a lot of data sets for you to replicate the studies that are published in that journal. Um, and then, you know, this would be very useful for your uh, projects in this course. So I would uh, really encourage you to go check it out. Okay, but this data frame um, consists of 4,360 observations on 44 variables. So I don't have everything listed here, but this is telling you that there's going to be two identifiers here. One is, so a panel, a data set is going to be written as, you know, let's say we're considering any variable Y. This is going to have two components. I is going to represent the cross-sectional unit. So there's, there should be some kind of a unique identifier for that unit. And then T is going to denote the value of that cross-sectional, of that variable for cross-sectional unit I at time T. Okay, so notice here, NR is the person identifier. Uh, we'll look at the data set um, shortly, but we have at least two things that we want. Uh, to identify in a panel data set. One is the person identifier or the unit identifier, and then um, uh, the, the years, okay? So this doesn't have to be taken every year. But the important thing is that the same individuals or the same units are followed over time, whether uh, these are collected at uh, the same time interval or not, okay? And then you have a lot of other information, um, which is related to demographics, um, here as well. So here, this, this study was really interested in look, looking at, you know, whose wages are going up because they are unionized, okay? So for example, construction, you know, we have some data on these uh, construction workers, um, agricultural workers, you know, especially the areas or the sectors that have 
um, unionization or even manufacturing, for example, right? So these are dichotomous variables. So let's take a look at the structure of this data set. So again, this command is going to give you this um, structure of the data set. So this is again trimmed, but it's 4,364, 60 variables on 44 variables. You can see that um, the unique identifiers are Uh, right here. So you can see that if we, okay, so if we look at the year, this is going from 1980 to 1984. So we have, even though our data set was going from 1980 to 87, we only have data for these years, not until 87, but until 1984 for uh, person number 13, okay? Um, and so on and so forth. So you can kind of gauge that uh, we don't have information for all those years on person number 13. Now, like I said earlier, if you wanted to look at more variables um, at once, then you can obviously here, you can look at the first 12 observations for all those variables. Um, and here you can look at the last eight observations as well, okay? So notice that for the first individual for 1980, this person is in the business sector. I'm assuming that's what it meant here. Um, so it's not really identified what this is, but Anyway, they have an experience of one year and, you know, that's that's what we know, right? So there's obviously more information that you can get because I've trimmed the data here to fit the slide, but you can uh, try to write this in R. <laughs>